want to turn to my next guest who knows of all, all about the cauldron of performing in Philadelphia uh, and, and doing so uh, with the eyes, um, it, looking at him with a, a ton of expectation. Uh, he won a Super Bowl with the Philadelphia Eagles beating Tom Brady, and he won a Super Bowl with his current team in his first time around with them beating Peyton Manning. He's the only human being to defeat either one of those guys, both of those guys in a Super Bowl. His name is Malcolm Jenkins. How are you, Malcolm? Rich, I'm doing well. How you been, brother? I am doing better always for, for talking to you. Okay, um, I, I know this is not your current team, but I'm 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 wondering what you do think of if I don't you don't mind me just throwing you in right now as part of the paparazzi, um, and what you think of what is going on with your former team in in Philadelphia. Do you have any thoughts on that subject, Malcolm Jenkins? If so, what are they? Well, you know, I, I'm I'm going to be honest. I hadn't really paid um, a ton of attention to it. You know, I, I was really just you know, looking around the league to look at, you know, with all of the coaching vacancies, you know, how they want to handle, you know, black coaches and what opportunities are going to come. Um, but, I, but I do know that whoever, you know, was going to take over that job in Philly was, was inheriting, um, you know, some work. <laughs> and I think Jeffrey Lurie made some, some comments earlier this offseason that, that, that hinted or was really direct about, you know, they're going into a rebuilding phase. And, you know, and I know as players on a team and as a fan base, you never really want to hear that um, because it, 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 it sometimes kind of muddies up what, what the priorities are. But, um, look, you know, they got a situation where obviously all that went down with Carson Wentz this year, a lot of money invested, uh, invested into him. Um, and then you had Jalen Hurts come in and, and really take command of this the offense it ignited a little bit of juice into the team. Um, and that's not the first time that that's happened, you know, from a backup quarterback, obviously, right. in Philly. And so it's, it's, it's one of those things that, like, something, something has to change, you know, whether you put that onus on the coaching staff or you put that onus on the players that are, that are there. Um, but, I, I mean, you know, there's obviously going to be a lot of work to be done there. But they've got they've got great leadership. They've got um, players, you know, in that locker room that are a prideful group. And what you hope to see is that, uh, at least from a fan, right? I'm I'm I even call myself an Eagles fan. Um, you just hope that the competitiveness, that the culture, and the uh, kind of the ethos of what that team stands for at least stays in place. So again, you know, as a fan of the Eagles, you do, however, have quite a unique perspective. And one more follow up on this: Is there an issue with Wentz in that locker room? We keep on hearing about it. You were there when there was a a magazine article locally that came out said there was a big problem with Wentz and players in that locker room. Is there a, an issue? Is there any there there about Carson Wentz that you can share with us, Malcolm? Well, I think you know. As a, as a teammate in front of Carson's, I, I, I think that, you know, it always starts right with performance. And he hadn't performed up to, uh, I think, the expectations that everybody's had for him. And, and I don't think he would say he's played up to his own expectations. Um, but some of the other issues that I felt, you know, when I was in the locker room was just that, you know, th- there was just too much um, leeway. Um, and it didn't make him a better player. I don't think they did him any favors by, you know, trying to kind of uh, protect his, his ego or trying to, um, you know, just just really protect him as a player as opposed to it keeping it, just like every other player, it's like keeping it performance-based and, and, and really being, you know, real about what he needed to improve on but also adjusting to, to put him in places that, you know, that, that, are, that can make him successful. And I think – you know, that's a little bit on the coaching staff. That's also some onus on the player. Like, every player go should go into every offseason evaluating what they did well, what they didn't do well, and you look to see improvement year after year. Um, but if, if if that's not the case and you don't see it and there are no changes and it's not being addressed, then I know, like, as a player, you almost feel like, you know, what are we doing? You know, you're, you're to do the same thing over and over again, I'm um, expecting different results is insanity. And 
And unfortunately, I think that a little bit of that has, you know, taken place over the, the last few years. And, and obviously, you know, this offseason shows that you know, something had to change in a major way. Uh, and Carson's still there. And, and so he's still, regardless of who they bring in for it, you know, to coach him and get him better, he's still going to have to improve as a player in order for that team to have success. Malcolm Jenkins here on the Rich Eisen Show. Let's talk about the hiring round. Uh, David Culley being introduced by the Texans right now. Um, he is a, a, a coach of color. The Jets hiring the first Muslim uh, to be a head coach in the NFL. And then the rest are uh, white men. What do you think of the current round of hiring in the NFL, Malcolm Jenkins? I, I think it's, uh, it's to me, it's been on par with the status quo. You know, every time we bring up these conversations and, 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 and you know, talk about how many qualified African-American coaches that there are out there to get opportunities, they just never seem to do that, you know. And, um, you know, and it's unfortunate. And, and you see uh, how many coaches that are white that get those jobs, you know, with little – uh, you know, um, with very little experience, with very little credentials, um, oftentimes coming from team or or having a resume that isn't impressive at all. Um, you know, it, it's 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 one of those things where, as even as a player in this league, who's tried to be vocal on it and and give my perspective on some of the the coaches that have helped myself, like Aaron Glenn, who just got a D coordinator job. You know, in in um, in uh, Detroit, I, I think he'd be a head coach in this league. Deuce Staley, somebody I've talked about, I think should be a head coach. You know, the enemy, somebody we've been waiting to get an opportunity. And I think, um, <laughs> you know, it's 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 really frustrating um, when you see how these the situations play out. Um, it, it just doesn't really seem like there's a concerted effort to to actually go with the most qualified. Uh, folks, but more so with pe- what who people are comfortable with, or you know, kind of this, this this good old boys club that that is really hard to penetrate and get into. So, what's the answer? You know what I'm saying. So, what would you say um, if you could, um, you know, have the commissioner's ear? Because uh, clearly, it is something that he he wants to address. Um, yeah. So, what would you suggest, Malcolm Jenkins, to try and? and change what clearly uh, needs to be changed? Well, like anything, right? When you want to change the outcome or change the landscape of an organization, you have to, and you want, especially when it comes to diversity, right? You want diversity within your organization and that to be a priority. Well, then you have to have a diverse group of decision makers. And unfortunately, when you look at, the ownership and the decision makers around our league, there's very little, if any diversity. And so we're expecting people who don't have a diverse, you know, who are not in a diverse, you know, group. We're expecting decision makers that don't have different perspectives uh, to suddenly change their minds and hearts um, and, and, you know, do something that's been out of character for them for however many long, you know, however many years they've owned these teams. And so, to me, I think if we want to be serious about having black coaches and more black GMs uh, and, and things of that nature, I think we're going to have to have a serious conversation about diversifying what ownership looks like. Malcolm Jenkins here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. Uh, I'm wondering, uh, can you give voice to what you and other veteran players in the NFL are thinking when you're seeing Deshaun Watson um, say he wants to be traded year after signing a big, long deal and – the only thing you can equate this to is what an NBA elite player attempts to do and get an exit visa from a team um, and a city that he's connected to. I mean, obviously, Harden would is the is the uh, equivalent one would say in terms of a player status, elite status for Deshaun Watson. Clearly, they're two different uh, people. But I'm wondering if you can give voice to what you and many other players of your uh, caliber and uh, experience think about what's going on with Deshaun Watson in Houston. Malcolm. Yeah, I mean, you know, contrary to belief, like some guys aren't necessarily motivated simply by money. <laughs> and, I, and I think um, 
whenever you see a player of his caliber, you know, it would, of his character as well. Like, he's not a guy who's had a history of being, uh, you know, uh, a problem, you know, child in the locker room or guy who just can't get along. He's always been praised as a leader and somebody who's, who's kind of stepped out in front. And when they are really vocal about wanting to leave a place, then it's usually, you know, something that you can't repair. And it's, and it's beyond working it out. And I think sometimes players have to do what's best for them to be in a situation where obviously they can, they want to, you know, make the money, but guys want to be able to win and be happy uh, where they are. You want to enjoy the work you do um, because it's a violent sport. We put our bodies on the line, and it's like when you're in a miserable situation on top of that, um, it, you know, it, it doesn't make for good good ball or a good career. So I think you see him doing what he needs to do to get out of a situation that wasn't the best for him. Let's talk a couple things about your own house, Malcolm Jenkins. Do you believe um, you have played uh, your last game with Drew Brees? Do you think Drew is uh, going to retire? You know, I, I'm, I can't speculate on it uh, sure. or really I can't confirm it or anything like that, but, you know, what I what I have seen, and um, and I can understand is that you know Drew's his body is it, it's getting tougher and tougher for him to finish these seasons, right? When you get older as a, as a player in this league, the, you really just are here for Sunday. <laughs> it's not the off season. It's not the training. It's not practice. You are here to compete on Sundays because that's what we love to do as players. And when you get hurt and you're in the training room as much as he's been, um, you know, that's not why we're here, <laughs> you know, to, to rehab and, and, and go through all of those things where you're not playing. And he's missed significant time in the last two seasons. Uh, his kids are getting older, and I know that's important to him, spending time with his family. Um, you know, but as a competitor, when you're an elite, it's like as he's been for so long, um, and to be so close, with the teams that we've had to getting back to the Super Bowl and getting an opportunity to compete for a championship, um, I think that that weighs very heavily as well. So it's a, it's a tough decision. Uh, I think, you know, we know it, he's close, you know, whether it's uh, this offseason or it's the next. Uh, you know he's kind of at the end of that rope, but he's still, you know, very much a competitor and knows he can compete in this league. It's just, you know, he's going to have to make the decision, you know, to weigh all the options. What's, what's the most important thing for him in his life at this moment? Um, and, and that's always – that's a good decision for him to be able to make. Most of us won't, <laughs> won't leave this league on our own terms. Right. And uh, it seems like he will. What about you? Uh, 14th overall pick of the 2009 draft, 13 seasons. You can get 14 seasons. Um, you play this year. How, how, long, how much longer do you want to – Keep doing it. This 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 next season will be thirteen. Um, okay, for me. All righty. And uh, you know, and I I set a goal for myself a long while ago. I wanted to play ten years in this league, and then after that, you know, I was going to take it year to year based off of my my body. Uh, you know, what my financial situation is looking like, um, and just like as a competitor, have I felt like I accomplished you know everything, and and you know even for me, I. I the thing that has kept me going is that I've been healthy for so long and I haven't had to, you know, spend a lot of time in the training room. I've been able to, to stick to doing what I love doing. That's playing on Sundays. Um, and I'm on a really good team. That's got a lot of really good potential, a great organization, a good culture. I'm having fun. Um, so I don't know, you know, how long I'll continue to do it. It's really year to year for me. Um, but at least I'm, I, I definitely know I'll be here this season. And I know you have uh, far, far more interests outside of the world of football. I do want to get an update on that in a second. Uh, yep. But first, front load Super Bowl 55. You played against both of these guys, one of them three times this year. Um, and uh, how do you, how do you, with your keen championship eye, see Super Bowl 55 going, Malcolm Jenkins? Yeah, I think to me the the most interesting storyline is going to be the Bucks defense, um, because I think you know Brady, as much as they weapons they have on offense with Tom Brady and all those guys, um, I still think the most uh, the 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 best dynamic of that team is their defense, and even in the game we played them that third time, 
it was a defensive battle, and their defense really outplayed ours. They took the ball away, you know, I forget how many times, um, but were very, very stingy in a defensive battle, and that was the difference in a game. Um, and they've been getting better and better, you know, each week. Those linebackers are making tackles, they're covering, and they're forcing turnovers. You got both those safeties I knew were banged up, but I was really, really impressed with uh, the rookie Winfield all year. He looks just like his dad out there. Uh, yeah, corners that I can match up. So, and if you look at the matchup with them last time, that was really the, where the game kind of was lost was the ability to handle uh, the Chiefs' offense, especially Tariq Hill. So, I'm interested to see what uh, the defensive scheme is going to be and how they handle, you know, the explosiveness of, of uh, the Chiefs' offense. And because I think Tom Brady and their offense is going to do what they do, and the Chiefs are going to do what they do on offense. But I think it's going to come down to if the Bucks can can continue to play uh, defense at a high level against the best offense in the, in the league. How's your production company, uh, Black Boys, uh, which was released in 2020 and can be seen right here on Peacock, available to stream for free on Peacock right now, um, is is part of your production company. What's going on with that for you? Yeah, so you know that that has uh, qualified to to be nominated for uh, an Oscars. I'm, I'm definitely okay. hoping for that, but I'm really now that the off season is here, you know, diving really back into uh, to those projects. Uh, we got a couple that we want to make. I want to make Black Girls for sure, um, and so it's just prioritizing projects. But that has been something that I really enjoy doing is being a storyteller and 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 giving people, um, you know, black stories that we haven't heard before in ways that we can digest them. It's really hard, you know, you, and you, you're familiar with how, how I've used my platform kind of in the sports world mm-hmm. to to talk about these issues, but it, it's hard to have, sometimes it's hard to effectively communicate in this space because we want to be talking about sports. Um, and, and, you know, there's friction there, but through film and documentaries, it just seems to knock down some of those barriers and walls and create a little bit more understanding. Um, and so I found, I found it, you know, to be um, a more effective way to, to communicate, at least for me. And so I'm really enjoying um, diving into creating more stories and more content um, to the production company. Well, as you know, my platform is yours whenever you want to promote anything you're doing, Malcolm. You know that. And I'm, I'm, I'm pleased to say it. And anytime. Seriously. Very much. Rich, appreciate I appreciate you. It. Of course. Um, before I let you go, you surprised Urban Myers coaching in the NFL? What do you think? I'm, I am. You know, um, I, I am. You, when you look at, you know, the time in Florida and, and, and he had some health issues and left there and his time at Ohio State, uh, really, you know, had, had a lot of success with the program but then had to step away from it. Uh, so to make the jump to now the NFL um, – you know, it's, it's an interesting one, and I think everybody has kind of their eyes on to see what what kind of culture he's going to bring in as a you know as a longtime college coach, but now a rookie head coach uh, in the NFL. So um, it's interesting, but you know, I'm I'm, I'm happy for him. Um, you know, and I think we'll 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 look to see. When you said he his time at Ohio State, what school is that? Because I I I I don't know what school that is because. It's the it's the team that your team hadn't been able to beat no, over a decade. No, I'm I'm just confused because <laughs> I'm confused because normal. Oh, I'm sorry. It's the same as the Ohio State. It's just I thought well, you're well, well, well. I'm Rich, sorry. You know, I'm confused. We we've got a long history. So for for all your listeners, to this, you're right. I I I, I didn't do it properly. It's the just, Ohio State. But okay. I was I now got really I comfortable okay. talking to my old friend Rich here, and <laughs> you of all people know it's the Ohio State. Yes, I do. I do, yeah. but you I also guys, you guys dodged us this year. No, no, I know. And blamed it on, and blamed oh, it on COVID. Oh my God! Don't go full Herb Street it's on me, crazy. Malcolm. Don't it's do that. Crazy. Oh, don't do that. I was disappointing. Wow. I was, I was disappointed. Oh my gosh! Don't forget though, when you said the Ohio State, who, wh- wh- where, where the goat went to school, right? Let's not forget that. Correct. What did you say at the top of this? I was the only. <laughs> Okay. Oh my gosh, <laughs> Malcolm! I always appreciate chatting with you. Uh, thanks for coming on and always spitting truth. I really appreciate our chats yeah. every time we have them. Thank you. 
Good to talk to you, Rich. All right, back at you. That's Malcolm Jenkins, at Malcolm Jenkins on Twitter, at Malcolm Jenkins 27 on Instagram. And you can, once again, stream now for free right here on this Peacock app, his uh, his documentary, Black Boys, which, could you imagine he wins an Oscar? He's el- gets nominated for an Oscar. Let's go. Oh, that'd be awesome. Let's go. That would be terrific. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.